What is up, So Hills kids, and Merry Christmas. I cannot believe that I'm saying that, that we are jumping into the week of Christmas, guys. You're watching this Sunday. Christmas is Friday, right? Is that Christmas Eve? I don't know. Who knows? But it's Christmas. I hope you guys have had an awesome Christmas season. Something about Christmas just warms my heart, and I think it does a lot of people. But ultimately, there's a reason for Christmas. And honestly, we've been talking about some really cool things. Uh, because we've been talking about whether or not God keeps his promises. And Christmas is actually one of the biggest promises Jesus made. The people of Israel looked forward to this promise since Adam and Eve. That's right. So we're going to check out today's Bible lesson and see what it has to say. And then we'll jump into really breaking it down and checking it out. I'll see you guys there. When sin entered the world after Adam and Eve rebelled, God made an important promise. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. As years passed, God's people waited for him to keep his promise. God sometimes spoke to his people through prophets and prophetesses, men and women who received a message from God and then told it to the people. The prophet Isaiah shared a message about God's promise to send a rescuer. The rescuer would be called the Messiah, which means anointed one or chosen one. This is what Isaiah wrote. The people are living in darkness now, but they will see a great light. A light will shine on them. God will grow the nation and give the people joy. People will rejoice like they do at harvest time or after a war is won. This is how God will keep his promise. A child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. All these names tell us who Jesus is and the great things that he would do. Jesus was coming to earth to help people and to protect people. Jesus would be a king who cares about his people, and he would bring peace to the whole world. Isaiah also said, his kingdom will be full of his power and peace. The kingdom will grow and he will reign on the throne as the king. He will be a good, fair and loving king who reigns forever. God keeps his promises. He remembered his promise to send a rescuer and sent his son Jesus into the world as a baby. Jesus grew up and provided salvation for sinners by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. Isn't that crazy, guys? Like, God made a promise thousands of years ago, and it came true. You see, even before um, Isaiah wrote those wonderful words in Isaiah 9, Adam and Eve, God said he would send somebody to crush the head of the snake or crush Satan. He would defeat Satan. That was Jesus. In one of the very first chapters of the Bible, we get that. And Christmas is our time to celebrate that. So let's open up our book over here. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let's see what it says. It says, for a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Do you hear all those names? So I want you to think about the names uh, maybe that you've heard in your life. Maybe like the King of Rock and Roll. Do you know who that is? Elvis Presley. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. What about, hmm, what about the goat? Who do you think of when you hear the goat? My first thought is Kobe. Kobe was the GOAT, guys. He was absolutely phenomenal at what he did and what he played, and he deserved that title. Maybe there's some other, like, titles that you've thought of, um, you know, and it stands for something, right? It stands for who they are. And so Jesus, he gets everlasting father, wonderful counsel, a prince of peace. So when we hear those things, we have to think those represent Jesus and who he is. How cool is that? That he is a prince of peace. Uh, he brings peace. 
and joy. And he's everlasting. He is there forever. So as we talk about God's promises, we have to think, well, this was a promise, was it not? God made this promise for us thousands of years ago and fulfilled it in Jesus coming and dying for us. So when we think about Jesus, when we think about who he is, we have to think about the promise he fulfilled. That ultimately he would bring peace and who would bring joy to the world, right? We sing that song, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive its king, right? And that is what we get to sing about. And that was a promise. That was a promise from God. From the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 3, to Isaiah 9, all throughout the Old Testament, and all, ultimately at Jesus, his birth and his death on the cross is the ultimate fulfillment of that promise. So when we ask ourselves, can we really trust God? Does he keep his promises? Well, yeah. He kept his promise. And his promise was so big that he sent his son to die on the cross for us in our sins. I don't know about you guys, but that seems like a big deal to me. That he would do that. That he would sacrifice his son and bring peace and love and joy to the world. So I want to invite you guys. Let's trust God. Trust his plan and trust his promises in our lives because he can do huge, huge things in our lives. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We've got one more a little lesson on God's promises next week, so you don't want to miss it. We're finishing up what happens with Pharaoh and Israel, so it's going to be a nail-biter. You guys are going to want to check it out. I will see y'all there. Bye.